Who is Unknown Man E? Can a modern forensic investigation finally identify the mummy known as the Screaming Man? The first scientific examination took place in 1886. His coffin was made from expensive cedar wood, but it was blank, totally unadorned. In Egyptian theology, a man couldn't enter the afterlife without his name. So there's something disturbing about the fact that he was left anonymous. Next, the Victorian examiners saw that the body had been deliberately preserved. That indicates respect and status. Before long, they came up with a dramatic theory to explain it. Maspero became convinced that not only was the screaming man royal, but that he had suffered a violent death. This Lecturer and author Susan Redford travels to Medinet Habu. She's looking for traces of a disgraced Egyptian prince who some believe could be unknown man E. This was the palace of Ramesses III, often referred to as the last great pharaoh of Egypt. Yet a chance find made in the early 1800s casts a shadow over his reign. This is the actual court transcripts of trials of a treasonous conspiracy against the pharaoh, Ramses III. The papyrus alleges a palace coup was orchestrated by a woman called Taya. She planned to assassinate Ramesses and replace him with her son, Prince Pentewer. Susan theorizes that if Taya were confident the people would accept her son as ruler, he must have had some legitimate claim to the throne. There's one scenario that makes sense to me. You have a chief queen. Her name is Taya. She is replaced by a younger woman, Isis, and a bitter rivalry ensues. Susan believes Pentewer could be unknown man E. Melinda Hartwig is an expert in interpreting the artwork of ancient Egyptian tombs. The Egyptians didn't consider a tomb to be the final resting place, but instead the starting point of a physical journey which began after death. You can see the extent that they went to make sure that everything was here that was needed. Unknown man E was mummified, which the Egyptians believed would allow him to live on after death but he was denied any of the protective magic, which would allow him to reach the next world. But the coffin of unknown man E was completely bare. Not only that, the essential protective items normally placed inside the coffin were missing. And most surprising of all, the sheep or goat skin found around the mummy of the screaming man may have been considered ritually impure by the ancient Egyptians. Some experts have concluded that for the screaming man to be buried in this manner means that whoever he was must have died in disgrace. The forensic examination of unknown man E is now underway. What Dr. Hawass and his team are hoping for is a clue, some hard evidence which will allow them finally to give unknown man E a name. What I can say about this mummy, number one, is the age. And I would assume between 25 till 40 years of age. This estimate is based on a number of factors, like the condition of key joints and the appearance of the teeth. Until now, most people believed that the screaming man died young. It now seems the screaming man was probably older than first thought the correct age to have been the adult son of Ramesses III. The evidence from the CAT scan now suggests that this could be the mummy of Ben Taur, the son of, of Ramesses III. If those who buried him intended to damn him, their attempts have, in a sense, been thwarted. We can't restore his name. We don't have final proof that this is Pentaware but we can restore his face. Facial anthropologists have now recreated his skull. Individual muscles have been molded into place. His skin has been restored. 
This is the face that in death took on a scream. The face of the screaming man.